In update 5.5 .5 of Warless Tank Splits, a lot of Tech Tree tanks will be turned into collectibles, and that means you can sell them for gold. Today, I'm going to show you 5 tanks that you might want to keep in your garage. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, tankers of Blitz Universe. 5 tanks you want to keep after update 5.5 .5 in World of Tanks Blitz has hit. And one of them is actually this one. Well, I, I think it is the Churchill Game Changer, or as it's officially known, the Churchill Gun Carrier. It's not a tank that is played a lot, hence it's being turned into a collectible tank after update 5.5 .5 in World of Tanks Blitz. But there are a few reasons why you want to keep this tank in your garage. Because, first of all, it has a really good gun. It is brilliant. The gun doesn't have any need for Premel in most cases, and it has a good credit coefficient for a regular Tech 3 tank. Other than any downfalls to the tank, any reasons not to keep it? Oh, yes, there are. Yes, there are. It's a fairly show, slow chassis with no real armor to speak of. And you've got flat sides on your superstructure, making you an easy target for high explosive tanks on any of the big guns at tiers 6 and 7 you will face. But hey, you're a British gun, you got HE as well. So one shot into the T67, and then another shot in that will finish him off just nicely. This video today is going to be about update 5.5 .5 in a nutshell and the tanks that will be in that update. Um, so I have a few games for you to show, a few uh, near on full games. I have uh, cut off the uh, least uh, interesting bits because I'm just driving into a position. But all of the games here um, are full games which show how to play these tanks that I think you might want to keep in your garage. And Yes, I, I know there will be people who will say, right, this Church of Gun Carrier, it needs to be removed. It's such a bad tank. And yes, the chassis is bad, but the gun is to die for. It has, like I said, no real need for premium ammunition. It has a very good rate of fire. It has a very good accuracy and dispersion and aim time and all. Um, but it has a very limited gun arc, which is annoying. And it is a very situational tank, a bit like the Sturra Emil, like the Stubborn Emil, and a few more of the glass cannons in World of Tanks Blitz. And that means you have to be map aware, you have to drive it around into positions where you can be successful, and of course you have to have RNG on your sides, uh, on your side as well for a bit, because I've already bounced two shots, and he's going to shoot into the ground, and look at that, straight through the front of the gun method of that M4. It's not a massively armored tank, I know that. But still, I hit him on the gun mantlet and penetrated straight through him. I won't be able to bounce any shots from this VK, but hey, uh, I've got about the same DPM as he's got, so I've blocked 480 in total now, and we are going to pop up over the ridge uh, here, and then, then we will... What we're gonna do? Yeah, oh, we'll, we'll get flanked, we'll get flanked by the AMX 12T. So yeah, go over, the, go over the ridge, go over the ridge, yeah, just in time, just in time, just in time, thank you very much. Like that, up to 5.5, uh, it will hit soon. Uh, no official date is known yet, but I think it will be uh, Tuesday or Wednesday uh, this week, probably. And there's a real need for the change in this, uh, for the change that Wargaming will do. A lot of people are moaning about tiers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 being changed a lot. But recently, uh, I've been playing a fair few games in, in the lower tiers because I wanted to get footage for this video. And boy, did I meet a truckload of seal clubs. People with loads of games in T46s, A20s, DW2s, KV1s, etc. And I'm thinking, maybe you should move up to higher tiers. Really, go up to tier 6, tier 7, 8, maybe 9 and 10. But don't play like 14k battles in an A20. Next tank up, VK3002M, the tier 6 German medium tank, which we've reviewed earlier on the channel um, with a with an all aces game, where I actually said, well, I kind of like this tank, so yeah, reasons to keep it. It's just a really good solid all round medium tank, and it's a fairly heavy one as well, so yeah, it can run pretty good. And when it's stopped here, it is a bit of an underestimated brawler, so yeah. 
this could be one that you might want to keep. But there are reasons why Wargaming are removing it as well, and that is the fact that the armor profile, it looks better on paper than it is in practice, because it has some very, very weak sides. HE from KV2? Yeah, no problem. And it does take quite some time to get to the top speed of 60 km per hour, because it is such a heavy tank. But when this one is fully upgraded, it's a VK3002M, and it, I think it's only actually the, the, the sides or, or the, the ports on the sides of the turret that give it away as a prototype and not a proper Panther D, which it actually really is. So, yeah, this is a tank that you might want to keep in your garage if you want to have a solid tier 6 medium tank there. Is it then a tank that's uh, a, a true keeper in the sense of the word? Well, I'm contradicting myself here, um, but in a way it is not. Um, why is that? It, it, it is, it's a tank that requires a certain touch from people. You need to know where to position yourself, you need to know how to use a gun to press, you need to know how to use it. Thick front plate, because it has a fairly good front plate, like the E50, like the uh, Panther, <laughs> lucky kill on the T34-1. Um, but yeah, it, it can put that front plate up to an angle where you can bounce, well, really good actually. Yeah, really good. The gun, not the most brilliant one, it's not as German as I would want it to be in terms of aim time uh, and all, and accuracy, etc. But once you get it into a position to work, then it can do fairly well. Um, but the playing field for tier 6 tanks, and for tier 7 and 8 as well, especially when it comes to mediums, there are just so many good medium tanks at tier 6 and at tier 7. The VK3001P gets uh, a sort of similar gun, leading up to uh, the Tigers, obviously, and that one has a bigger alpha. At this tier, which is good. Uh, same goes for the T3485 and the Type 58. They have guns with just a bit more alpha. And this tank, for all it does well, it, it it's big, it's heavy, it hasn't, I think it hasn't got a really good camo rating. It's got a cupola on top, so it needs a careful hand of driving. And I've been preserving my hit points here on uh, Yamato Harbor. I was uh, bottom tier so I didn't rush in really quickly and I started to not go in uh, even quicker. I really stopped driving in when I saw my teammates going towards the A cap. And we've been holding the flank over here and putting in some solid damage and there is that, uh, what is it, uh, Jackson and he misses and I miss and now I can just uh, move in because there's just two tanks left and that means I can now sacrifice my hit points, catch one on the tracks we got to shoot him again and then we're gonna pop adrenaline. Um, was well, thinking, right, if I had popped adrenaline earlier, would I, would I have been able to ev evade that shot, the last shot he put into me? Most probably not. Um, but we have got five kills and we have, are on our way to uh, shoot the Yak Panther as well. So all in all, fairly solid game. But you can also see that you need to preserve your hit points in this tank as well. And that's why I can see this one being removed from the tech tree. It's not a popular tank. But I quite like it, and that places it on the number 4 spot in the 5 tanks to keep. If you are not a subscriber to the channel yet, please do so. We will give a full roundup of update 5.5 of the new tanks coming in, and of course the new restructured tech trees. And then we have tank number 3 on our list. The Panzer 3-4, a medium tank, um, at tier 5, German tank again. Um, and a few reasons to keep this one. This one has brilliant mobility, just brilliant, excellent mobility. It moves around really quickly. The speed allows you to flank like a boss. And for a tier 5, it earns really good credits. Not the magnificent numbers that the Shinokai slash Shinobi can do, but yeah, that's pretty broken. The downfall, the armor is angled, but it's not really reliable. And the turret is worse than the hull, so meaning hull down is not much of an option. And it feels like the gun, it takes forever to aim. It, uh, so slow, so slow, so slow. <laughs> and it's just not as accurate, as accurate as you would want it to be. But still, it made it into the list because I find this tank to be 
a very solid drive. It moves forward fairly quick, it picks up speed fairly quick, it moves backwards fairly quick as well, and it turns on the spot just gloriously. Really glorious. So yeah, this is number three on the list of five tanks to keep after update 5.5 in World of Tanks Blitz. Getting a lovely bounce from the SU-85 BUs and sort of rammed and then shot by me and we've got one kill. Righty, back into update 5.5 proper. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I saw a lot of people who had been driving low tier tanks to an extent that I was thinking, mate, you shouldn't be here. You should be in tiers 5, 6 and 7. The lower tiers should be um, a playing ground, a learning ground for new players. And it should not be for the stat padding, win rate raising players who have got really high win rates at uh, the lower tiers, but fairly low win rates at the lower tiers. And of course, it's not a crime to play tier 5 if you want to. It's not a crime to play a Dracula if you want to. But the, the change in tiers, the separation in tiers is there for a reason. It's The goal of the game is not to go to tier 10. Make no mistake, no mistake about that. That's not what I'm advocating here, that everybody should go into tier 10 as quickly as possible and die there as horribly as possible. But what I do want to stress here, that it should be possible for new players to just play and be able to actually survive on the battlefield and stay there longer. Wargaming are going to change the uh, hit points and the statistics on lower tier tanks as well, which means they will, uh, yeah, they will have less DPM and less penetration, etc. But them having less penetration and less DPM, and other tanks having less hit points, means that they will be able to survive longer on the battlefield. And if you are longer on the battlefield, and that's what I've been saying a lot in my videos um, after I started the channel, if you can stay in, uh, if you can stay alive in the tank, then you can be effective. And if you can stay alive in the tank and stay in the battle for two, three, four minutes, that means you will get experience. You won't get any experience from being stomped by uh, a seal clubber in a A20 and an A20 who is just going to unload with its um, auto loading gun on you. That's not going to learn you anything. Um, it's not going to learn you anything either if you uh, drive around like I'm doing here and then get shot to pieces by the Panzer 3 slash 4. And yes, I know I'm seal clubbing here like a boss. Well, that's all for a good cause, that's for making videos to educate the players, so uh, yeah, that's uh, I'm, I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> I'm allowed to do that. But yeah, I mean, if, if you are, I wouldn't say that, yeah, the type of player, if, if you're the player that has got loads of games in his A20 or DW2 or any other tank, maybe you should rethink and, and ask yourself, is it really necessary for me to stay in those lower tiers as long as I'm doing? Should I really get 17,000 battles in the Cruiser 4? Does a 80% win rate in the tank make me a good player or not? Everybody has their own ways of making, um, of getting entertainment from the game, but yeah, I think you should go up a tier, but that's just me probably. And before I dig myself an even deeper hole, let's take a look at the T21. Maybe this was a bit of a surprising choice uh, to put in here, but it's I found it actually be to uh, to be a very fun tank because it's got great mobility. It is a really good flanker. It has got good gun depression, and being a light tank, it keeps the camo rating while it is on the move, and that's obviously a good thing. Any negatives? Any reasons to sell the tank? Of course, there are reasons to sell the tank as well. It's an American one, so the gun handling, it's its not great. And yes, at tier 6 there are a lot of good tanks, so you will face stiff competition for being competitive. But I like this one, I like this one. It, uh, the Jumbo might be a more reasonable choice in here. But if you are looking at tanks to keep in this tier uh, after a bit 5.5, do give the VK3002M and the T21 um, a chance really 
I would not hesitate to put this one into my garage and use it to practice your flanking skills. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here on Fort Despair. I went into the middle um, because my team went towards C, so I decided to go up on the little steps of watching the interior area of, um, of the ruins of the fort. And it turned out to be a really good choice, and we're just going to drive around like a freaking maniac over here. And we're going to shoot tanks, and then think, right, can I shoot this one? Oh, let's try that one. Oh, hello, Yakons. Yeah, right, shoot the ones, and I'm behind you, and then turn and pop a drilling, and go, 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 go. Speedy, speedy, arriba, arriba, Andriante. We're going to shoot you, we're going to shoot you. Can we save my teammate? Uh, no, we can't. Oh, bump into the Yakons. Yeah, that was unexpected, but he has got a broken engine. And the Sentinel kills the Jagdpanzer, and then I can kill the VK, and we can save our teammate. Thank you very much. But then there's another tank rolling in. Hello, VK2801. Can I shoot you? Of course we can, of course we can. I'm gonna drive around, I'm gonna drive around. This is, it's almost like mad games. <laughs> but you can see what I meant here with the excellent mobility. We've got two bases. Uh, we are two bases behind. We've got one base. Uh, we're shooting the VK and I'm using a bit of gun pressure and I'm gonna chase him now. And just look at that. I'm, I'm keeping up with the VK, which is known as a bit of a speed de demon and a very quick tank. But I can just keep driving after him and just shoot him up the ass and then uh, kill him. And we are now going for the next target. There are two one-shot tanks available. Can I shoot that one? Yes, we can. There we go. Can we shoot the VK-30 or won't be? Yeah, he has just fired, so we can shoot him as well. There we go. Let's shoot you. There we go. Thank you very much. And now we're going to run circles around the house. Did I mention the mobility yet? Oof. Oof. <laughs> Got tooth. And it's not even a Russian tank. This is America. And we're going to play that song in our heads. America. Lick my butt and suck my balls. It is. Uh, I, I love this one. I love this game as well. Wasn't thinking um, I would survive actually because I kind of missed just that MT25 pushing in and then he puts one shot into me and another one and another one and another one and a nearly 4k damage 400 damage into me. Not 4k 400 damage. But I lost a lot of health and that's not good. So can I shoot you again? Yes, we can. I'm popping adrenaline. We're going behind the wall, so I'm slightly held down. Oh, don't, don't, don't shoot, shoot me. Don't shoot me. Can I shoot you? Yes, gun depression. Thank you very much. Can I shoot you? Of course we can. And then roll forward. Deny him from shooting me. I'm reloading quicker. There we go. Yes. Thank you very much. We get a lucky bounce. <laughs> but five kills. And this is another ace game. Love that one. Really good mobile flanker. Wouldn't hesitate adding that to your garage in update 5.5. And of course, this one had to be there in the list. Uh, the KV-13. Well, the big reason to keep it in your garage uh, is it is it's a rare tank. It is a Russian tank with some reasonable uh, armor, actually, because it's kind of IS, uh, IS-like. And it's a rare tank. You don't really see this one a lot in the game. And that's the reason why it is being removed from the tech tree. And there are more reasons why it is being removed. Why is this? Why is it such an unpopular tank? It's Russian. So, what's the accuracy on it? The gun, it, it really isn't good. And tier 7 it is filled to the brim with good medium. So, why bother with this one? Well, once you get it uh, to work and let go of the fact that it's a sort of IS chassis, then it is a tank that is actually pretty funky. Um, it is a good, solid, medium tank. I have an older video on the channel um, where I get an ace in this one together with my teammate back then from Ambrose, uh, Oblivion. And we both get aces in the VK... Oh, in the VK... <laughs> in the KV-13. Um, so yeah, it, it can it can really work. It can really work. It, it, is, a, it is a good, solid tier 7 tank. And the best thing about it... If you keep this in your garage, you play it, say, like 20, 30, 50 games, whatever, and you still don't like it, you can sell it. There's a sell button. You can you go into the upgrades and then you sell it. And, and, and then you get 1,500 gold. That's not bad. 1,500 gold. I mean, if you sell all these things on the list, just 
put them in your garage and then consider what I was thinking and then watch the video again and then maybe try to play them uh, properly and not bounce like I'm going to do here. <laughs> but as I mentioned, you can sell these tanks for gold. There's a complete list on the portal and in the in-game news where you can uh, see the gold value of tanks. This one, the KV-13, is 1500 gold. So if you have three garage slots, get this one. This one would be the first one I would get into my garage. If you haven't got any slots, you might want to sell tier 1, 2 or 3 tanks you don't play and that will stay in the game. Because, yeah, these tanks give you 1500 gold. The VK... The Churchill Gun Carrier and the T21, they are tier 6 tanks and that means they will give you 500 gold each. And the Panzer 3 slash 4 will give you 250 gold. So the tanks I've shown you here will give, give you 3250 gold and that's not bad. It's not bad at all. And it does mean that if you don't like them, they don't have to stay in your garage. I would keep them after a bit 5.5 and I think I will keep playing them anyways. But if you don't like them, and they are not delivering what you want from them, you can sell them. And that's a good thing. That's about the best thing that we can get from a bit 5.5 if you are a veteran player. And of course it is, um, it's, it's a lot of clever marketing and uh, making sure that, <laughs> that the veterans have something to look out for. Free gold! Oh, it's free gold, it's free gold, I want free gold. <laughs> Of course I want free gold. I don't like the fact that the tech trees are being restructured. I don't I think Wargaming could have done different things than just that. But it's going to happen anyway, so we might as well make the most of it. Pick a few things that we want to keep in the tiers because we like how uh, we like how they play because we need them as a light tank to train our crew skills or whatever or just because they are fun to play like the church of gun carrier even if there are far better tanks available in the tier but yeah that's a whole different subject and a whole different story my name is martin dogger thank you very much for watching ladies and gentlemen tankers of the universe i'll see you all on the next one cheers and happy tanking